Today I'm gonna to be building a brand new PC based on the current flagship 12th gen Intel Core i9 12900K. And a big thanks to Intel for sending over the main hardware for this build. 12th gen Intel Core processors are very different than all the previous generations before them, and in many ways represent a major step forward in technology and performance. An all new hybrid architecture combines two different types of processing cores optimized for performance and efficiency called P cores and E cores respectively. P cores are the fastest cores on the processor. They're optimized to handle single and lightly threaded tasks like gaming. In fact, the max single core turbo frequency is an insane 5.2 gigahertz. E cores, on the other hand, are designed to handle highly threaded workloads. Ideally, these should be working on background tasks so the P cores can focus on the big important stuff. But how do all these cores know which tasks to focus on? That's where Intel's Thread Director technology comes in. Using machine learning telemetry, they're able to predict workloads with nanosecond precision and provide this feedback to the operating system scheduler that assigns the task to a specific core. But not all schedulers are created equal. Given the age of Windows 10, as you can probably imagine, it just wasn't made with these kinds of advanced features in mind. To be perfectly clear, Windows 10's fully supported on this platform, but to really take advantage of everything that the 12th gen has to offer and squeeze out every last drop of performance, you're gonna wanna switch over to Windows 11, which has a much more sophisticated scheduler that's capable of assigning the workloads to the right cores. 12th gen systems also adopt the all new PCI Express 5.0 standard and support DDR5 memory. At the time of this recording, you can probably go out and find a kit of DDR5 RAM, but I'm not currently aware of any consumer grade PCI Express 5.0 devices, but it's still nice to have that future proofing built in for upgrades down the line. For this build, I'm using the current flagship of the 12th gen lineup, the Core i9-12900K. It's a 16 core CPU made up of 8 P cores and 8 E cores. The P cores are capable of executing two threads at once, bringing the total available processing threads up to 24. MSRP on this chip's around 600 US dollars. An all new Z690 chipset based motherboard with an LGA 1700 sockets required for all 12th gen processors. That means there's no backward compatibility with older motherboards. So if you were looking for an excuse to go out and get a new motherboard, there you go. When it comes to thermals, Intel did something really interesting here. They thinned out the already thin die even further and reduced the thickness of the solder and thermal interface material. And they did that in order to beef up the IHS. But the big question is why? If we take a look at the official power ratings, we can pretty much see what's going on here. The base power on the 12900K seems like a very reasonable 125 watts, but under maximum turbo conditions, that number nearly doubles. And that means this CPU is gonna need to dissipate a lot of heat. For this build, I'm going with a big 360 millimeter AIO cooler that fully supports socket LGA 1700. It should give me the cooling performance I need and maybe even allow for some overclocking, but that's gonna be a topic for another video. The motherboard I'm using is based around DDR4, so that means I'm not gonna be having any fun with the new super fast DDR5, at least not for now anyway. I'm really not overly concerned though, cause from what I've seen online, there's not a massive difference in system performance across the board when running DDR5. Performance gains are definitely there, but it seems to vary quite a bit depending on the game or the application you're running. If you're thinking of building a 12th gen system and you can't find any DDR5 or just think it's too expensive right now, I wouldn't really worry too much. A solid motherboard and a nice kit of DDR4 RAM should do just fine. One part I always tell first time system builders not to cheap out on is the power supply. A lot of the higher performing hardware out there tends to be pretty power hungry and underpowering it is, well, not good and kind of defeats the purpose of buying that kind of hardware in the first place. For my build, I'm going with a monster power supply capable of delivering a massive 1200 watts of system power. I want to have the power budget available to allow the 12900K to maintain its turbo frequencies as much as possible so that I'm always getting maximum performance. Plus, I'm also installing an RTX 3090 GPU and it just so happens to suck back enough energy to power a small town. I think the 12900K paired up with the 3090 is going to be an awesome combination of hardware for gaming and productivity workloads, and that's exactly what I'm going for with this build. To finish everything off, I'm going to throw in a few extra drives for storage, and that's it. Let's fire this thing up.
By now, it's really no secret the 12900K is a beast of a gaming CPU. Everybody already knows that from the launch reviews. I've been keeping an eye on temperatures and frame rates in a bunch of different games, and so far, everything seems pretty solid when it comes to FPS. Now, to be fair, the 3090 definitely has something to do with that, especially when it comes to graphically intensive titles or just running at higher resolutions in general. But if you really want to get an idea of how the 12900K can crank out frames, running something like CSGO is a good way to find out. I was playing some CSGO and keeping an eye on the frame rate counter and I saw it hit over 600 on multiple occasions. And that's insane. That's the highest I've seen on any system that I've owned. On the productivity side, I ran the system through my regular video production workflow that includes working with a mix of H.264 and 265 4K footage at various frame rates and with some basic motion graphics. First impressions here look good, and this is something I was really curious to see, because the 12900K actually has fewer processing threads than my current system. Timeline performance is good, I'm not getting any lag scrubbing through footage with the playhead, and playback is pretty smooth, and I'm not running any proxies, the footage is just playing back as it is in real time. Exporting a high quality 4K project with H.264 compression pushed the CPU temperature all the way up to around 82C, and that's definitely hotter than I'm used to seeing, but given the maximum turbo power draw on this chip, it's really not a surprising result. If you're picking one of these up, do yourself a favor and get a good cooler. Overall, my initial experience with the 12900K has been great. It's been great in gaming and my video production workflow. I still need to do a lot more detailed testing and comparisons to my current system before I decide if I'm officially going to switch over to this, but so far it's looking good. I had a ton of fun working and playing with this new hardware, and I'm really excited to keep testing it out and making more content and sharing more experiences and details with everyone. Make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss any of that upcoming content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.